So what is Christian mysticism? First, mysticism is the belief in or experience of the mysterious. It is a knowledge that is beyond the knowing, and it's an understanding beyond reason. Reason, which is a faculty of the mind, could not grasp it in fullness, but the heart and the intuition can experience it, and the mind can observe it. Now, a lot of people think that mysticism is contrary to Christianity or to the Abrahamic religions, but that's not true. In fact, the very fundamental essence of the Abrahamic religions as a whole, but then the religion of Christianity in particular, are very mystical. For instance, the virgin birth. The description of the birth of Christ, that he was born of the Virgin Mary without any intercourse, and that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. This is mysterious. It's mystical. This is a mystical teaching. Another mystical teaching in the Bible, in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, is the burning bush. When Moses was experiencing God, God supervened upon an object, which is the bush. And in Moses, the prophet's observation through the mind or reason, the bush that he's perceiving is burning, but the fire is not consuming the bush. And that's mysterious. It's a mystical experience. Moses is experiencing God and he's communicating with God. What's happening in that particular situation where the prophet Moses is observing God's presence with his mind, nothing makes sense. What he sees is not something that he can actually logically understand. Because the bush is burning, but the fire is not consuming the bush. It's a mystical experience. It's mysterious. Another mystery is the transfiguration. In that moment, Christ is perceived by his apostles in a way that they don't understand using their minds, but in their hearts and in their intuition, they can understand beyond the understanding and know beyond the knowing that what they're seeing is a godly or divine phenomenon. The Bible is full of mysteries like these, and the very essence of the communication happening between mankind and the divine is of a mystical or mysterious nature. And perhaps the greatest mystical phenomena in Christianity are the holy sacraments. In ancient Christianity, for example, Orthodox Christianity, the very concept of church going draws attention to mysticism. Because unlike, for instance, the modern concept of church going, the ancient Orthodox Christian faith believed in the mystical presence of Christ and heavenly beings in the church. For example, the whole point of going to church was to attend and be part of the Holy Liturgy. The liturgy where these chants and prayers take place, the holy angelic beings and the Christ himself are present in a mystical sense in that moment and at the culmination of the liturgical prayers, the Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion is given for believers to actually eat his flesh and drink his blood. And this is also a mystical phenomenon. So this is mysticism. The bread and the wine actually change into the true flesh and the true blood of Jesus Christ. When the bread and wine change to the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, we don't know. How it changes, we don't know. And in what miracle and science it changes, no understanding. It's mysticism. What is mysticism? It is that which we cannot understand but that which we believe to be true and that which we actually experience in real time and we know it's true. Not by running a scientific test, 
or by trying to find out the veracity of the fact, by using our logic, but by believing and by knowing in the heart. And this is why it's said that it's a knowing beyond knowing and an understanding beyond understanding. It is beyond our mental capacity to process. Many people who don't understand what mysticism is or what esotericism is simply dismiss it as untrue because they rely so much on their mental capacity to understand, to believe the veracity of a thing. These are passages out of my book, Reason and the Sacred, where I discuss philosophical theism, God's essence, metaphysics, orthodox Christianity and mysticism. Finding your life in your false self leads to death. But the crucifixion of that self for the finding of the true self, the Christ, is a rebirth, resurrection and transformation of one's identity in the eternal, being everlastingly vivified in the Christ and the mysteries. The mysteries are the holy sacraments. Do not identify yourself as God, but identify God as the true self. Your false ego shall then be destroyed.